Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Trinity Trading. Today is the 5th of December, 2021. I cannot believe it. We have 20 days until Christmas, and I wonder how many of you guys have already went out shopping this year? How many of you guys are prepared for Christmas? Um, it feels like yesterday that we you know, started, but at the same time, uh, sorry, started this year, but at the same time, it feels like one of the longest years on record. Uh, I'm not, <laughs> it's pretty impressive. Um, so, you know, we'll see. Anyways, let's go ahead and start with the broad market analysis. I promise to make this pretty short for you. Uh, just to start with, my sentiment, looking at the DIA and the IWM, those guys on a pattern recognition uh technical analysis only four weeks down this is actually um one of the longest streaks we've had since covid um and so saying that it looks like we had sort of a flush low in those and um but when i look at the spy and the cues it's just kind of starting so two weeks in of uh, down pressure whereas dia and iwm i believe are on four weeks so what does that mean uh, the SPY and the Qs need to come back two more weeks before we start to find buyers. Um, do they all kind of line up? Or is it because, you know, the SPY and the Qs have been stronger this year? They've kind of uh, found their bottom. Was Friday a flush low? Do we continue higher? Um, you know, and all of these start to work in unison towards the end of the year. Now, luckily, we do what's called the neutral strategy. So once again, um, that neutral strategy, regardless of my overall sentiment, um, I stick to the technicals. So just to make this really easy, uh, when price pushes above the green uh, line here, we look to go long. If it pushes below the red line, uh, we're looking to go short. But again, the lower levels are support and the higher or the, uh, the levels above are resistance until proven otherwise. So if for some reason in any of these charts we gap down into one of my targets, I will be looking for a bounce. Now, whether or not that bounce turns into a humongous uh, move to the upside, or perhaps it's just uh, very quick and we're taking profits very quickly. I will be coaching, of course, in the morning. Uh, you all know that. So tonight when futures open, you can get an idea uh, of where the SPY, the Qs, the DIA, and the IWM will open. Like, for example, the ES is 10 point for every 10 points. The SPI, SPY moves about a dollar. All right, and then over on the NASDAQ futures, uh, roughly about 42 points is every dollar in the queue. So it gives you a good idea where we're opening up on these blueprints. Let's go ahead and get started. If you have not seen how to trade this neutral strategy, please just go back to last week's, uh, watch the beginning, and that's going to show you uh, how I trade this. So let's go ahead and get started. The neutral for the SPY, 458 by 454. It's not too wide. Um, if, if price breaks over the green, I'll be looking to go long. Most likely my stops will be uh, pretty close here underneath about uh, 456 and a half. And I'll be looking to trim it to 461.32, uh, 464.05, and 466.54. Basically, when a price goes over each level, that resistance then turns into support. So I would lift those stops up underneath those targets to the upside. Once again, if we were to break down below the neutral, uh, then all of a sudden my stops are up here where I'm comfortable and then I'm looking to go short into the targets below. Now, I do want to be careful. Like I said, the DIA and the IWM are looking like they could be wanting to put in a rounding bottom this week. We'll have to see. Okay, we'll have to see. That's just my first impression that I got from looking at the four weeks down that they are experiencing right now. Okay, we'll get to those here shortly. So if for some reason we open up at a lower level, okay, and underneath this you probably can't see, but we have trendy levels right underneath here, and you can see that purple line. If for some reason we were to open up there at 450.85, I'd be looking for support. It could be, you know, you're looking at crypto and a lot of people think that uh, these charts are going to do the same on open tonight, that the futures are going to gap down pretty big. And if that's the case, again, if we gap down, one of the biggest things I'll be looking for, does that gap down just come into my line of support or do we actually take out the slow? And if we take out last week's low, it, that's a different story. Then we're looking for 446.89, 443.85, and in this green box somewhere, I'd be looking for buyers to step in for that 
last end of year rally. Now, how big that rally puts us, whether it's back to all time highs or not. Again, we're just here to coach on a day to day. I'm going to be your lifeguard, get you in the right direction. So just come and check us out. All right. So we're going to be able to help you there using these levels over here on the queues. Um, overall, again, two weeks down, we're inside the cloud. And if I didn't uh, say that on the spies, again, we are in that cloud. Uh, we don't do this very often. Matter of fact, it's only happened once before this year um, and both times. OK, meaning uh, the first time was a huge buying opportunity. Uh, and any time we've come down into the nine EMA has been a huge buying opportunity. Um, I don't see it any differently now. I ignore what's being out and pushed out in the news. Um, I try to stay away from uh, opinions and just stick to technicals. OK, so again, we're in that cloud. I'm looking for a buying opportunity. But again, that doesn't like listen before we go any further. That doesn't mean. I'm going to jump on the call side on everything or go long equity. It just means I'm looking for that opportunity. If we continue down, then I'll buy puts. All right. Straightforward. All right. So again, cues, same thing here. If we break above the green 387.17, I'm looking to go long above that into 390, 393, 396. If for some reason we break down below the red, say we open around 377 and a half to 375. Uh, that would be a lower low, uh, but I would be looking for support in that area. OK, let's go ahead and move on to the DIA. So the Dow Jones, for me, I did not change this blueprint for this week. This is your same blueprint as last week. Notice that uh, price did flush. Um, it kind of shows you what I'm talking about, right? We flush down into the lower levels. We're looking for support there. Uh, you find support and then we end up right back in the neutral. Over here is the daily by, by the way. So if you're looking at that, um, if we break above that 348.71, we could see an attempt into 351. Now, one thing I do want to talk about are the EMAs in every one of these charts. Uh, prices underneath the EMA are in the EMA. And when that happens, we are under a lot of resistance. It's going to take some sort of catalyst in the market. Who knows what that is uh, to really push through all that supply that's above price right now. OK, so a lot of resistance here. So saying that if profitable on a position that's moving up, I'm looking to trim a lot faster. OK. All right, let's go ahead and move into IWM. Well, before I go on there, sorry, four weeks down, folks, I you know, you go back and you look for the entire year, four weeks. This is unusual, okay? And we haven't really had a move like this since COVID, all right? So this is unusual, pattern recognition only. I'm speaking technicals here. I'm looking for a bounce. And really, at the end of the day, even if we flush tonight, I want you to understand that doesn't mean I'm wrong. Let me go ahead and show you what I mean, okay? We're going to zoom in here. Let's say that we flush and everybody that bought, uh, let's say, calls into next week, um, you know, they're like panicking. They're like, darn it. I knew I shouldn't have trusted it. I uh, just know this. If we do not take out these lows and we start to find buyers in here, this pattern called the rounding bottom. What I'll be looking for is on day one, we do something like this. Day two, we go inside. Wednesday, we start to go up and then boom, we got this nice little rally and everything looks the same as before, right? And this is where everyone's gonna come out of, uh, you know, the woodwork saying, hey, I knew it, we were in that channel. I was never bearish. I just happened to be in calls, right? And that's good, that's awesome if that's you. Um, I hope that works out for you, right? So again, that's what I'm looking for, nice round and bottom. And you can learn a lot by studying these, okay? Studying these round and bottoms. First, you get the flush low that scares everybody, stops everybody out. Then they push it higher into Friday's close. And then they start to slowly, check this out, folks, slowly make higher lows. That is the key there. Please pay attention to that this week. All right, going into IWM. All right, same thing here. Holy smokes. You know, when you didn't think, you know, everybody's been waiting for this big breakout in small caps, just like me. Uh, <laughs> you got the breakout, folks. That's right. One whole candle and a half and boom, the sells are the the buying opportunity is over. Right. Well, to me, the buying opportunity is just kind of starting if we don't take out uh, all these wicks down here to the lower left hand side right over here. All right. And again, neutral strategy, pretty straightforward. 
Um, you can see here, if we go back above 214.53 and we hold that level, I'd be looking for 216.30, 218, uh, and possibly up to 221. And same thing, if we break down below 210.65, uh, look for support at one of these levels. Wh whether you want to short there or not is up to you. Stops can go above this 210.65, uh, and you could be trimming into the lower levels as well. If for some reason we got a big gap down, I'll be looking for this to be support until it's not. All right, pretty straightforward. Let's go into gold. I'm going to make these really quick for you. So gold, uh, I did not um, change the blueprint as well. You could see it worked pretty well last week as well. Price broke down. It found support at my lower target at 165.24, then pushed up. It's a really boring trade. It's not something that I'm even interested in at the moment. That's me for right now. Okay, so overall, I'm neutral. You can see my banners here are also saying neutral. All right, so TLT, um, these are your bonds. Um, and you can see, um, I had to put a new uh, strategy or blueprint out here. Um, it did very well on last week's. Um, you can go back and look at that as well. So if you took the buy above the green, congratulations. You hit almost all your targets. Well, now we have a new one. It price pulls back down to the 152.87. Look for support there. And probably most likely we'll move back up towards the 154 uh, area. Uh, if it cannot get over 155.48, it just goes sideways and kind of uh, uh, stays there and maybe even dips back into the neutral. Uh, for me, I'm not interested in trading the uh, TLT, just kind of using it as an instrument here. And if you look up and to the left, uh, we do have a pocket of supply here around 157. So for me, uh, I wouldn't expect much more than 157 by 159 this week if it continues to stay bullish. Let's go ahead and go to the TNX or the Treasury. I also did not change, or sorry, the TLT, I changed the blueprint. TNX, I did not. Um, this one, I would expect the Treasury uh, to start going bid somewhere in this gray box. So between the 12 and a half to 13.08, I did not change the blueprint. Just use it as a blueprint, or sorry, as an instrument uh, to get sentiment off of. Uh, obviously, do not trade this. All right, so here's the dollar or the DXY. Same thing, didn't need to change the blueprint this week. You could see it just stayed neutral. It is rounding out. This is what a round and bottom looks like, folks, over here on your right-hand side. Again, a flush, higher lows, and this is a pretty bullish pattern. So you know, bulls, be paying attention to this. I would say if price can't get over 96.58, I wouldn't be too concerned. If it starts to fade, I think the market starts to uh, melt up a little bit this week, okay? All right, so the skew is your hedge hedge funds. I only pay attention to the weekly. Uh, numbers around 149.64. Uh, this is saying protect, okay? And uh, it's been right for a little bit, for a couple weeks here. And, um, you know, going into this week, it's saying still protect. Um, We'll see about that, okay? Um, and then over here on uh, P call, this I have to say got very high on Friday. What it's saying to me is that um, there's a lot of fear, okay? And so all of your retail traders, they were um, net long, all right? And then they were caught off guard maybe into the beginning of the week or last week. Uh, but now it's saying there's so much fear that people are jumping on to the put side when really in reality, this is a buying opportunity for me. So once again, I'm looking at, you know, starting, starting to look, I should say, at um, looking for long term trades. You know, I love absolutely, which brings me to my next subject is the fear and greed is at 20, which is extreme fear. This is where I do my best. So I'm looking at buying names that have been beat down. Um, and that is my focus this week. And I'm going to have a big list for you folks tonight uh, inside the room. Uh, we're going to wait for futures to open and then we'll check out some names. Uh, but I'll be charting a lot of stuff for a longer horizon, longer time frame, uh, and just give you some names to really ponder and look at. Okay. So again, fear and greed is at 20, which is extreme fear, which tells me when the market's at extreme fear, everyone's protected. Uh, they're on the put side. And if I were in charge of the market, it'd be a great time to rip those faces off, right? And push that market up. Now, again, that comment might throw you off, 
my neutral strategies, the prices need to come into that support. If we get a flush, I'm paying attention to those higher lows. Do not forget that. All right, down here at the VIX volat volatility index, um, you know, this is pretty straightforward. Caution over 20. Um, you can see the volatility increase prices. Uh, we got wider ranges in stocks. Uh, people got fearful, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So my biggest thing this week, if price can't get over this 33.94, I think we fade back over the next two weeks back down uh, at least into 24 by 20. Okay. Now, if we break over the 33.94, you could expect 37.4 all the way to give me one second here to this pivot up here. And then we have this pivot up here around 40 and a half to 41. Okay. All right. So the next thing we're going to be looking at are the ES monthly versus the weekly. Um, you know, I, you guys have heard this for so long. But man, I have to toot my own horn. I put the blueprint together in December 2020 for my members. Uh, not anyone out there, not any hedge fund. Um, no, I mean, no one, absolutely no one is got this kind of technical analysis. You could see it right here. You could follow me for the last year. You could see all of this. Uh, we started this. I said where price would go. I said where price would turn around and everything has happened just the way I planned it out on the ES futures, which also correlates to the SPY. Notice that price broke out uh, back in December when I put this out. Uh, it hit each level. When it took out those levels, we look for price to move up into the target. We hit here, okay, in November, almost literally to 47.56 and a half, and then price pulled back just like I expected. Um, and now we're just kind of hanging in there. And honestly, as long as we stay in here above 44.66, I wouldn't be too concerned. I think we just go sideways and try to, you know, round out and possibly uh, push back towards 46.19 and possibly to the all-time high of 47.56. Over here on the weekly, um, this looks a little messy and I apologize. I'm using my thinkorswim here. Um, you can see here, same thing. I haven't changed it since up, since October. And the reason why we did not change this is because we were not building value above the red box. So I told you to look for this. You can see now we're starting to pull back. We did find a little bit of demand here. Look at the trendy indicators. These green arrows is telling you that buyers are lined up here. Uh, and so everything is working. So again, if I take you over to uh, trade view, and we um, put you on ES Futures, you can see that green box is right in line with the uh, trending indicators. And I said, stay patient in here. Stay patient, okay? Because look, people are getting like messed up here. All right, big time. Um, I start to feel a little bit more embarrassed if we start to break down below the 4466 area into 44, sorry, uh, 4444, okay? All right, let's go ahead and minimize that really quick. And let's come over here to the NASDAQ. Again, I can't make these blueprints up. I gave these all to you. Uh, they have worked to the tick. Not anyone out there is able to uh, forecast price like Trendy Trading. Um, once again, it's all right here to show you. It's weekly that I give you this feedback. I think it's absolutely outstanding. I love it. <laughs> I, I mean, when I really think about it, I mean, who else is able to give you this months in advance? Uh, not anyone that I'm aware of. So you can see here that price loves the 9 EMA uh, on the monthly. Do we pull back there? Again, it's super strong. So at, into the year end, maybe we're to get a capitulation event and we touch this 9 EMA. If it does, oh my goodness, I am ready to freaking buy. So I'm going to put uh, an alert just to be careful here um, in case we get a capitulation event. I want to know. And I want to be ready. All right. So we're going to put that there. And over here on the right-hand side, again, I can't make this up either. This was your blueprint from before. We hit the red box. We have then pulled into the green box. We'll be watching this closely uh, for the NASDAQ futures. Oil futures. Okay. Enough is enough, right? It's like, how much can you go down? Really? You know, and sorry about that. I was showing you guys a daily. It should have been on the weekly. Look at this. Absolutely incredible. Let's uh, let's scare everybody, right? All the way into the holiday season. Let's drop oil prices, get the gas prices down, right in time for you to start traveling for Christmas and New Year's, right? 
Anybody traveling anywhere? Anyways, it's a seasonality thing, folks. It's just that there's some kind of thesis behind, you know, why it's doing something every single year. I want, I encourage you to go back and look at the weekly and the monthly is around, you know, spring break time towards uh, Christmas and New Year's. It's always the same exact thing. It's just a different story, right? So here we are. We pull back into the green box. We're starting to find some buyers. Uh, the month is pretty ugly. Um, I, I have to be, you know, Honest, I thought if we got over this level up here, which we didn't, right, uh, that we would hit 93. 93 was my target. You know, is 93 still my target? I think so. But uh, we we really need this level down here at 59.74 to hold. Um, if that doesn't hold, then I don't think we hit that 93 anytime soon. Um, but if we start to bid above 69.54 again, I do believe we hit that in due time. All right, Bitcoin. So uh, just know that, uh, you know, I called it to the top in the beginning of the year. Uh, I shorted the uh, Bitcoin futures um, down to the green box early in the year. And right now, towards the end of the year, uh, you could see that uh, we're right back in the green box. Now, these are different from the blueprints that we shared with you in the beginning of the year. But listen, 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 charts are charts. Uh, once again, I will tell you that nobody comes closer to my levels um these things work and so my point is don't get overhyped by these names that came out of nowhere this year who uh are really popular but really when you look at them they're giving you a lot of like noise just look at the technicals green box to red box red box to green box it really is that simple uh and again finding them is not simple i put a lot of time and effort into these but i do teach how you do that all right, so Bitcoin, you know, forget about the news. We know that it pulled back big time uh, over the uh, weekend, um, but it's okay. It's absolutely okay. Uh, what I'm seeing on a monthly is a nice cup, cup sorry, <laughs> a nice cup, a pullback into the green, and possibly a nice cup and handle later on uh, this year. Whether it happens before Christmas, I have no idea. You know, do you believe in Santa? I listen before I go on here I've never I've probably had one really good solid December December suck they really do they're not easy to to trade I've been telling my room that for years um, and so this year I felt really good I mean we even were I was profitable last week which is really awesome I'm sure a lot of people were uh, on Fintwit um, but you know I was profitable I'm proud of that and uh, it wasn't easy and um yeah, anyways, <laughs> here I am in the green box. The 9 EMA is your cushion. There's an inside and up here. There's definitely demand here. Um, if we look over here into Bitcoin, you can see here entry on reclaim. It never reclaims, so we're not going long. You're just letting it do its thing. And we talked about this uh, here in the room. So nice H pattern. Um, and then just refer back to the thinkorswim uh uh, levels that I just gave you. All right. Now, if things were to get really ugly, you could see prices come down here towards the 48 level uh, into 43, but I would expect some support down here around 43. Okay. All right, folks. Well, I really appreciate you taking your time out. Don't forget to check out trendytrading.co. Uh, it's really a lot about education, but not only education. I am one to say that we are very trendy in the fact that we show our brokerage trades and they're sent to my room in milliseconds. Now they're there to show you proof of concept, but to also tell you and show you that I do what I say. And just like you, uh, things can be emotional. You know, there are times where uh, we can hold on for dear life. Um, there's times that we lose. There's times that we win. But I want to be able to show my members what true trading looks like. Um, so if you're interested in coming out and learning with us, I absolutely encourage you to do that. Uh, and then you could see how it is that I trade, the levels that I trade, and the amazing charts that I provide for my members. I really appreciate you. Thanks for taking the time. And uh, we'll see you soon. And uh, good luck to you guys this week.